It has all sorts of names, none particularly pleasant. The Great Tsunami, the Silver Wave, perhaps most ominous of all, the demographic time bomb. All of them reflect the fact that America is aging and it's happening fast. According to the U.S. Census, by 2034, for the first time in history, there'll be more Americans aged 65 and older than those under 18. Does an aging society need aging workers? Almost certainly, but in the U.S., we go in the opposite direction. America prizes younger workers. One 2020 survey of 100 recruiters and hiring managers found that 88% believe age discrimination in hiring is a problem. And in the pandemic, we plunged in the opposite direction. The Federal Reserve of St. Louis estimates that more than half of the 4.2 million people who retired in the first half of 2021 retired earlier than expected. The Great Resignation was in some ways also the Great Retirement, as millions of older workers left early due to some combination of health concerns, frustration with the job market, padded retirement accounts, and a fading desire to return to the office. This loss of millions of experienced workers has contributed to the tight labor market in the U.S. and the struggles of many businesses to remain staffed. We wanted to find out whether other countries struggled with resignations and early retirement. Interestingly, we didn't. Um, and um, over the last two years, resignation rates have not significantly uh, been high. In fact, they've been lower um, um, because it has been a very tight labor market in Singapore. That's Abe Cam. He's the permanent secretary of the Ministry of Manpower in Singapore, which makes him the most senior civil servant in the department. Why is it that his country struggled with the challenges of the pandemic, but saw none of the dislocation of the Great Resignation? This is Century Lies from the Stanford Center on Longevity. I'm your host, Ken Stern. In this episode, we continue our exploration of different work cultures with a journey to Singapore, an island city-state with five and a half million residents. With a land area less than New York City's and few natural resources, Singapore's main resource is its people. Because of this, the country has thought deeply about its aging population and how to adapt to this change. Singapore is also one of the longest lived nations on earth, with a life expectancy five years longer than the US. If you want to see how a country carefully grapples with the challenges and opportunities of a longer-lived society, there's no better place to start than here. So when we looked at life expectancy at around age 62, uh, we see that um, successive cohorts have better and better prospects. Younger cohorts actually, on reaching 65, have many more years of living ahead of them. Uh, and uh, they can choose to do it in retirement, but you know, the prospect of retiring and, you know, and spending uh, the rest of possibly 30, 35 years uh, remaining you know, uh, totally in retirement, that's one option, that's the traditional option. Uh, but we think as part of uh, active aging and successful active aging, um, we, we just have to, have to give more options to, uh, to people. They are, they are more physically fit, they are, they are mentally much more active, and it is our job to see how we can give them as many options as possible uh, to plan this, this next you know, chapter in their lives. To provide options for older workers, a government must understand their needs. And older workers can't just be grouped together. Each one has a unique situation. Uh, one archetype uh, really, you know, saw work as part of uh, also their community and their network. And so um, uh, quite apart from the finances, they, they, they had a desire to continue to be active and to do it in the workplace. With another group, they had other plans. Uh, they had new family commitments, a grandchild might be coming. What they want is flexibility. If you were to tell them the work's going to be the same, they will say, thank you very much. I, I think it's time for me to retire because uh, I do have other plans now. We also found out that when employers were very keen to hold them and they said, what can we do uh, you know, to make it possible for you to continue to work, uh, that opens up a different conversation. Uh, so uh, some value the ability to work fewer days in the week some value the ability to move to a sort of part-time 
uh, role. Singapore began planning for demographic changes almost three decades ago, gradually tweaking their retirement system along the way. In the 1990s, the country's retirement age was set at 60 and then raised to 62 in 1999. Decisions about retirement policy are made through a tripartite approach, seeking consensus between workers, unions, and the government. The goal is to achieve a sustainable and stable system. We do not want policies that swing from one extreme to another. Uh, this is not helpful to workers. They can't really plan. Uh, they don't have no certainty on what to expect, and it should not change very radically from one administration to another. In 2005, the tripartite group reconvened to further raise the retirement age. But the group hit a wall with employers. Like many countries, Singapore has a seniority system where older workers are paid more. Businesses were worried that even if older workers wanted to keep working, they couldn't afford to keep paying the high salaries they commanded. In an effort to find a solution, the country turned to the super-aged nation of Japan for advice. Well, you know, you guys are aging faster than us, so how do you solve this problem? Uh, and they said, oh, um, well, what we do is we re-employ the worker. So our first reaction was, what's that? Uh, and so the, our, our Japanese friends uh, explained to us that, well, in Japan, in, in re-employment, what, what they do is that they, they allow the employee to retire, but the, the very next day, he is re-employed on a new contract. The essence uh, of this sort of solution, if you like, is that you know, when they start on the re-employed contract, uh, it starts with a, a clean sheet. So they are able to you know, sort of have a good discussion on what is the role that the employee would like to play you know, in the next few years. There is no expectation that it has to be the same role, uh, the same responsibilities. Singapore decided to give the Japanese re-employment scheme a try, and in 2012, they introduced a mandatory re-employment age of 65. In practice, this means that employees can either choose to retire at 62 or keep working with their companies under a new revised contract until age 65. As of now, Singapore plans to raise the retirement age and the re-employment age over the next decade to 65 and 70, respectively. This would give older employees the option to keep working under re-employment through their seventh decade. And uh, of course, this is a never-ending conversation because even as we bring this about, the future cohorts, they are getting healthier. Their life expectancy is continuing to grow. This system may sound great in theory, but how does it work in practice? How many people participate in re-employment? So out of those that uh, choose to have an interest or intention to continue working, we find that 90% uh, of them are re-employed. So um, the employer makes them an offer. And uh, more than two-thirds, um, after their discussion, they, they continue on largely the same terms, same wage, same sort of job responsibilities. Uh, but we do find that perhaps at the more senior levels, there is a greater desire to shift to a slightly different gear, shift away from being the direct line manager, if you like, uh, to a different role. And businesses enjoy this arrangement too, as it allows them to maintain a steady stream of experienced workers. Well, I think many years ago when the workforce was still very young, the, the first reaction of businesses would be, this sounds like a lot of regulation. Um, today, businesses, I think, recognize the labor market is tight. So it's no longer a viable, you know, sort of business strategy to uh, expect or plan on the basis that um, you could replace your workers who are retiring by hiring the fresh school leavers. And in a tight labor market, I think they also appreciate the option of uh, having experienced workers uh, who are able to continue to work uh, for a few more years. So it actually is part of a broader sort of uh, set of measures uh, that help them to get the manpower and talent that they need uh, to, uh, to grow their business. Albeck says that despite a potential five-decade age gap between workers, employees report that everyone gets along just fine. There are some bumps, though, like when a younger employee takes over a more experienced team. They need some guidance or advice on how do I lead a team where, you know, uh, some of the members are actually uh, older than me. Uh, or in some cases, um, my mentor continues to be in the team. And so how do I exercise that leadership? 
it needs a uh, graciousness on both sides. It needs uh, uh, an effort to, to, to make the relationship work. You know, it works well when the retiring leader has a gracious attitude, uh, you know, and is willing to give uh, space to the younger leader to grow. On the younger leader's part, it's, it's also part of growing that confidence in themselves and in the team to do what they need to do. I think they're happy problems. Uh, and, and thankfully, you know, um, we find that uh, it's a transition that um, people over time get more confident in navigating. All this raises the question, how much farther can the system go? Is 70 a natural stopping point? Or in a few decades, will employees have the option to continue working through age 75 or even 80? We, we cannot take the position that we've reached the uh, uh, definitive end state. I, I think that would be quite um, uh, unrealistic. What will be the key driver to this conversation is whether Singaporeans continue to be healthy whether Singaporeans continue to look forward to ever-increasing life expectancy, whether the life expectancy measured in health-adjusted terms also continues to grow. The second factor, I think, is also what the aspirations of our people are. Because ultimately, I think this has to be about helping people fulfill you know, what their wishes are. Uh, if there is a desire to continue to be active through you know, being uh, engage in employment, then I think there will be a demand uh, and more workers will be willing to do this. So as someone who contemplates longer careers for a living, what is Abek's personal plan for his later years? Yeah, I, I, I hope to continue to be active in some capacity. Hopefully I'll run my marathon. <laughs> is that right? Is that a goal to, to run a marathon? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've done a half, but not a full. Yeah, it's it's a small country. I mean, I've been to Singapore a couple of times. So, is it is it a couple laps around the the city? Is that how how's the marathon actually look? Oh, I think you'll be surprised at how uh, inventive and ingenious our planners can be. Um, Singapore is uh, forty two kilometers uh, across. You know, from one end in the east to the other end in the west, roughly. Uh, but within that, um, we have more than 500 kilometers of cycling paths, running trails, uh, nature reserves, etc. So we have many ways to, to, to plan and route a, a, a marathon route uh, and also have a Formula One circuit. <laughs> so you don't, but you're not aspiring to drive the Formula One. It's just a marathon and that's your goal. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Marathon will be a great achievement for you. Yeah. Abek has outlined the high-level planning for Singapore's re-employment system, but what does it actually look like on the ground? Employment to old age can be hard to imagine, especially in a workplace that requires manual labor. To answer this question, we spoke with a Singaporean hotel manager who works with older employees on a daily basis. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Kung Tiong Wah. Um, I'm from Singapore. I'm, an, I'm a cluster general manager of a M Hotel Singapore and Kaptong Kings Hotel Singapore. Cheung Hua manages over 200 workers between two hotels, and 11% of them are over 62 years old. So how do these employees fit into the workplace? Um, okay, um, i, I got to be honest to you. Um, you know, handling a millennial... Um, handling uh, the Gen Y and uh, the baby boomers are very different. Um, if you can, uh, if you can train your mature workers to be with you, or they are with you, it's going to be for very long term. They are loyal, they are mature, uh, they are very stable in the workforce. Uh, in 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 our society, uh, mature workers are are being treated as high value human capital because. They are willing to do jobs, or they are they are capable of doing jobs that uh, uh, some of us may not want to do, like the blue collar. Um, a lot of our millennial wants to be in a white collar in 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 the office, uh, doing finance, HR, and uh, sales marketing. Um, our mature workers is more willing to be on the ground, so we 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 celebrate difference for sure. Tiang Hua embraces his older workers' willingness to do labor-intensive jobs but also recognizes that they could strain his employees. So instead of forcing them to adapt to the work, he makes sure the work is adapted to them. 
uh, the oldest blue collar worker is 74 years old. So she's a public area cleaner. So what, what we have done over the last five years is we look at um, what are the challenges that they face uh, on the physical work. So example, we used to be having a very heavy buffing machine for the marble in the lobby. So it weighs like almost uh, 55 kilos uh, for that, that machines. So as the, the, the public area attendants get older, what we do is we look at um, the weight of the machines, the efficiency of the machines, and then how can we help them to do their job better. Chung Wa also reskills older employees, allowing them to shift into different roles and maintain employment as they age out of labor-intensive positions. Three years, four years ago, we have a lot of bellboys. They are 63 years old. So what are we going to do with them? Because the bellboy can't carry the 30 kilos luggage anymore. What we have done is we send them for professional certifications um, for future jobs that they don't need to use a lot of uh, strengths to carry stuff. So one of the things that we have done is we send them for a, a official certification with the police force to become a security officer. Hence, after they, they, they feel that they, are, they have enough of carrying heavy luggages, they will then go out and become a security officer. So I think this is something that we have done is while they are still working for us, we are preparing them for re-employment when they get older. So we don't wait till they lose their job and they don't know how to find another new job. We already prepare them for the re-employment, maybe not in this department, but you know, for future. That we identify what are the jobs that they can do at 67 and 70 years old. This decision to cater to the needs of his older workers both strengthens Cheng Hua's workforce and allows his employees to continue working if they so choose. Well, um, if, if we don't do anything to make the job easier and more efficient, it's very hard to compare a mature workers with a young workers. But if we make effort to improve uh, the work processes for our mature workers, by using technology and processes, we probably will be able to uplift the performance of a mature workers to be equivalent to a, a young workers. And you, if you employ older workers, I'm sure that tomorrow when you wake up in the morning, uh, the old workers will be in the hotel. Uh, the younger workers hmm, may, may or may not uh, be there. <laughs> that, that is the trend in, the, in Asia. So uh, they are lawyer, uh, they are long service, they are sure to be there. In Singapore, concepts of age, wisdom, and loyalty are inextricably intertwined. And an age-diverse workforce that balances the experience of older workers with the energy of younger workers is considered an important goal. That's not quite the case here in the United States. An era when the diversity of the workforce is rightly prized, the concept of age diversity is still conveniently ignored. A recent study of 10,000 companies by Deloitte found that more than two-thirds of companies view age as a competitive disadvantage. That's the received wisdom of our work culture, but there is little scientific evidence to support it. For most people, raw mental horsepower does decline after the age of 30, but knowledge and expertise, the main predictors of job performance, keep increasing even beyond the age of 80. So even if older workers might struggle to push that 120-pound buffing machine, it is likely that reinventing the workplace to harness the strengths of older workers would be a sound investment for companies and a societal necessity if we want to turn that gray tsunami into a silver boom. Century Lives is produced by Carrie Thompson, Aaron Slomsky Pritz, and Cameron Chertavian. Music for this episode was provided by Ramteen Arablui and the Audio Network. Central Lives is a production of the Stanford Center on Longevity, where our mission is to support ideas and research so that century-long lives are healthy and rewarding ones. You can find out more about us at longevity.stanford.edu. Support for the Stanford Center on Longevity comes from the Annenberg Foundation, dedicated to addressing the critical issues of our time through innovation, community, compassion, and communication. 
Thanks for listening. I'm Ken Stern.